Hey, I'm James, and in this video I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the external carotid artery. To start with, I will describe the course of the external carotid artery, and briefly list the branches and easy ways to remember them. This part of the video will be good for those who are wanting a brief introduction to the anatomy, or are just after some revision content. For those wanting some extra detail, I will go through each branch to get a better idea of course and territory later on in the video. Subscribe to Geeky Medics to be the first to know when we release new videos. Before getting to the anatomy of the external carotid artery, we must first consider the common carotid artery. The common carotid artery and the associated branches are the main arteries to the head and neck. If you have studied the vasculature of the thorax, you will know that the origin of the common carotid artery differs on the left and right side. If you have not studied this anatomy before, it is worth briefly going over this before continuing this video. Our blood supply to the brain video briefly covers this anatomy though. At approximately vertebral level C3 or 4, the common carotid artery bifurcates to form the internal and external carotid arteries. However, it is important to remember that the level of bifurcation is extremely variable. If I take out sternocleidomastoid, we'll be able to see the bifurcation clearly. You may be able to feel the pulse of the bifurcation on yourself, by placing a fingertip just lateral to the upper border of your thyroid cartilage. The origin of the external carotid artery is approximately here at the level of the upper border of the thyroid cartilage. The vessel ascends, then passes backwards slightly to continue to ascend between the mastoid process of the temporal bone and the angle of the mandible. As you can see, the external carotid artery then continues to ascend within the substance of the parotid gland. So I will remove the gland and the ramus of the mandible to follow the last part of its course. The external carotid artery then divides into its terminal branches within the parotid gland at the level of the neck of the mandible. So, the best tip I can think of when it comes to distinguishing the external carotid artery from the internal carotid artery is to look for the associated branches within the neck. The external carotid artery is generally anterior lateral to the internal carotid artery, though this relationship is not always obvious, so it is much easier to look for the branches. And with that being said, Let's go through them quickly. There are eight branches to consider, and from inferior to superior, they are the superior thyroid, ascending pharyngeal, lingual, facial, occipital, posterior auricular, maxillary, and superficial temporal arteries. The maxillary and superficial temporal arteries are the terminal branches of the external carotid artery. The mnemonic to remember the branches that I've heard the most is some anatomists like freaking out poor medical students. And there is probably some truth in that. But there are many ways to remember the branches, so just look on the internet if you want to find some more. Anyway, the next part of the video will look at each of the individual branches in more detail. Starting with the superior thyroid artery. The superior thyroid artery is the first branch of the external carotid artery where it arises just superior to the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. As the name suggests, the artery will eventually supply the thyroid gland. Some of the associated branches tend to be quite tricky to identify in laps, though most supply muscles within the area, but you may see the superior laryngeal artery every now and again. The glandular branches supply the apices of the thyroid lobes. The inferior thyroid artery arises from the thyroid cervical trunk which is a branch of the subclavian artery, which you may have covered when you looked at the upper limb or the thorax. The next branch is the ascending pharyngeal artery. It arises from the medial surface of the external carotid artery and ascends to the base of the cranium. This artery is very tricky to see and may not be discussed as much in anatomy labs. I will change the model view so that we can see the path of the vessel and the associated branches. The ascending pharyngeal artery and the associated vessels supply muscles of the pharynx, the tympanic cavity, and the meninges. The lingual artery is next on the list, and you may have already guessed that this artery primarily supplies the tongue. However, it is also important to mention that the associated branches supply the floor of the mouth as well. This artery more often than not arises directly from the external carotid artery, but can also arise with the facial artery. I see this latter relationship quite often in the prosections I use in my teaching sessions, so it may be worth remembering this variation. The lingual artery ascends towards the floor of the mouth between the middle pharyngeal constrictor and higher glossus. 
In fact, hyoglossus serves as a good reference point for many structures entering the oral cavity, so it's worth keeping that in mind. The branches of the lingual artery are not often seen in the lab and are difficult to appreciate on the model at the moment, so I will switch to branches mode again. This is the dorsal lingual artery that supplies the posterior parts of the tongue and closely related structures such as the palatoglossal arch. Here is the sublingual artery which passes forward to supply the sublingual gland and the floor of the mouth. Finally, here is the deep lingual artery which is the terminal part of the lingual artery. It supplies the inferior surface of the tongue. The facial artery, in my opinion, is one of the easier branches to identify because it usually has a distinctive, tortuous appearance. It passes deep to the submandibular gland and courses across the body of the mandible. It is often quite easy to see this artery in the lab. Before it passes deep to the submandibular gland, the ascending palatine and tonsillar arteries arise, the latter of which is the primary blood supply to the palatine tonsils. Here is the submental artery and the glandular branches pass into the submandibular gland. Some key branches of the facial artery on the face include the inferior labial, superior labial, and the angular arteries. The occipital artery passes backwards, then pierces sternocleidomastoid to eventually reach the skin over the occiput. Associated branches supply the dura via a meningeal branch that passes through the jugular foramen, the prevertebral muscles, and sternocleidomastoid. The small posterior auricular artery passes towards the skin and muscles posterior to the ear. On its course, small branches arise to supply muscles such as sternocleidomastoid and stylohyoid. There is also a branch that supplies the parotid gland. The maxillary artery is the next branch of the external carotid artery. It is one of the terminal branches of the external carotid artery and is complicated enough to deserve a video of its own. Actually, if I turn on branches mode, we can see how extensive the territory of the maxillary artery is. The maxillary artery is often described in three parts. The first part provides branches to the lower jaw, ear and meninges. The second part supplies the muscles of mastication. And the third part generally supplies the nose and upper jaw. This is obviously an oversimplification of the maxillary artery, as a detailed description is beyond the scope of this video, so I would encourage you to read around this topic. The final branch of the external carotid artery is the superficial temporal artery. It first arises deep to the parotid gland, but becomes superficial as it passes over the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. This artery then divides into branches that spread over the muscles, fascia, and skin associated with the temporal fossa. A branch that is commonly present in labs is a transverse facial artery that passes deep to the parotid gland towards the nasal and buccolabial muscle groups. So that's me. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.